Okay, welcome back. First, you should uh, download the image from the link below. And once your image is ready, we will adjust the camera settings and the rendering settings to create this, this effect. So the idea is to make it look realistic and bright, uh, just like an office. We will add uh, ceiling lights, the spotlights, an exit sign, and a little bit of a daylight. Okay, so we can start now. First, make sure you choose the V-Ray Renderer in your setup dialog. Also, we can add a physical camera to the scene. Place it near the side of the room, point it you know, towards the center. Change your perspective view here to camera view. And uh, move the uh, camera about five feet off the ground. Now select the camera and open the edit parameters. Let's change the film sensor width to 38 millimeters, the focal length to 31 millimeters, the f-stop 4.0, and the frames to uh, 135 of seconds, and change the ISO to 100 here. In the render setup, lock the uh, the view and render. All right, we need to add some lights. S let's first add the default V-ray light. Just leave the uh, default uh, numbers as they are and uh, make a two by two light and place it uh, near the ceiling. Move this over here. Now, if you render, you will see the effect. Here we can see the effect of the default light, but we will add a realistic IES light instead. First, let's turn on global illumination. GI bounces the lights from the objects and walls and fills the scene with more light, and that's how you get this. So first, let's download the IES light data from uh, GE Lighting. If you go to their website, and all of this is free by the way, you can download this light and also try to find this image there. We're going to need this one for the ceiling fixture. These are the specifications here. They say they have a 2x2 two two and a 2x4 feet lights here. They also have the data here. These are the actual IES lights. Since you don't know which one is which, you may want to download all of them. Just right click on any of them, click on save link as, and then uh, type a simpler name you can recognize later. Now let's place a V-Ray IES light in the scene. Click, click near the ceiling, drag to the floor pressing shift to keep it straight. Select the source of the light and change it from none to the 2x2 IES light we, sell, we saved in, uh, in our folders. Now render the image to see the effect. Here we can see the light effect, but we don't see the light fixture. Here's the image I saved from the uh, internet. Now let's go to add that uh, fixture into the ceiling. First, uh, I'm going to make the material. Use a V-Ray material again. And on the self-illumination tab, change the color to almost white. Then change the multiplier to 2. You can change the, uh, these values to decide how much of the image you want to see. On the diffuse map, add the map, the, uh, the image we saved earlier. If you double click on this now and click on view image, you can crop the image so that only the diffuser is shown. When you're done, click here on apply. So we can add this to the plane in the ceiling. So let me make a two by two plane and place it near the the other light.
you want to put this inside the uh, space in your ceiling and center it and you also need to move the light right underneath it but do not cross or go over it has to be right underneath now let's apply this to that plane and let me move this along with the light they have to be together and both of them actually have to be in the right space so when you're done we can render and this is what you should see so here's the diffuser and you can uh, correct its brightness with this uh, multiplier value All right, so once you're satisfied, you can make instance copies of your lights and populate this, the whole ceiling and then render. So now you have something like this. All right, let's make a few more adjustments here. We're going to go back to the GI settings and we're going to change a few things here. The primary engine, we're going to change to a radiance map and here go to advanced tab. And then the saturation, we're going to change this to 0.8. And we're going to add a little bit of ambient occlusion. The ambient occlusion will help show better the areas where the ceiling and the wall are getting together and other dark lines. So turn it on and, and type uh, 0.6 and the radius 2 inches. On the here the irradiance map and the light cache values if you want to see. Let's go back to this image sampler here and change the anti-alias type to progressive. And here on the filter area, change the size to 1.3. This will make it a little sharper and we will avoid this type of effects on, on materials and it will help on the dark lines as well. All right, see, that corrected a little bit this. You don't have that effect. And it helps make this a little softer and darker. Also, the edges of the diffuser on the top are much nicer. Here's your uh, occlusion effect. So let's go back to add the light from the skylight. For this, you can add a standard V-ray light. Place it outside the, uh, the offices near the window. And all you have to do is just uh, direct the light towards the window. Make the multiplier 5 and change the color to a um, sky blue or something like that. You could also do a kind of orange color if it's an afternoon light effect you want to get. The idea is to just to imitate that there is sunlight and there is a blue sky outside uh, the office and it's coming a little bit through, through the window. Change the directional uh, value to... 98 it's almost uh, you know to make the light a little harsher all right so when it's ready you can render to see the effect so there it is okay the blue light is reflected in the uh, ceiling frame as well you can see it here now we can add an exit light picture I found this fixture called EDG type. It measures roughly 8 by 13 by 1 inch. So we'll make a box that size. It's 1 inch by 8 height by 13 wide. Convert this box to an editable poly and select edges and uh, connect with one line. Move it up and then select all these uh, polygons to extend or extrude about one inch. Remove the back side of it. We're going to make two color materials for this sign. One for the top 
and one for the bottom. The top or the color of the top could be just dark gray or, or white and the bottom was going to be a transparent acrylic. So once you're colored on the opacity map you're going to add the bitmap. You need a bitmap that says you know the words exit in black and white. We're going to make this sort of glow like uh, it has its own light. So here on the self-illumination tab, you can choose a bright red orange color. And you can use the multiplier to adjust its intensity and apply that to this to the faces. Before you can add a UBW map, a face type, and then render that. Now the image of the exit sign is reversed, so on the output you can select invert here and change that. It should look like this, where the black area is the transparent area. And that's it for the uh, sign, you can place it in your image now. The same, uh, using the same procedure as the other lights, we can add more lights, like these spotlights here. These are IES lights as well. I found these lights in the Lithonia lighting uh, website. These are called LDN4 round series. They are 4 inches. So here's the IES light. Download it and save it. And you can apply that as well. After this you can just make copies of your lights. Here are the spotlights. If you want to adjust the color or, or the brightness of the room, you can always use the camera. Changing the uh, uh, f-stop can give you more or less light. Or you can also change the sensitivity of the film on the ISO to get what you need. So let me try a little larger image here. So using this technique you can actually show uh, what an office would look like with certain lights um, and very close to real life. Because if you're going to use Photoshop or other means to enhance the image it may not show, it may not look like uh, the actual office. This is very much using just the lights as they come. Now architects or architectural photography tries to straighten the vertical lines by using uh, the camera. Here we can use the perspective control for this tilt. By clicking auto vertical tilt correction it will do it for you. So let me show you this corner. You may get this uh, warning relating to the distortion of the image, but it's uh, if the image comes fine, then it's okay. I don't recommend it myself. I like to show it just the way a 35 millimeter camera will show. Now the V-Ray light lister can be used to turn the lights on and off or to change the colors of the lights. But I don't recommend it. I think also it's also better to use the camera. But you can use this to show what it would look like if you dim the lights, for example. So now you can save this settings for future use on, uh, on a certain offices of this type. So thank you for watching. I hope you like the uh, tutorial.